Sponsored by Local Touch Online, a free online magazine that has an exclusive article by Pop Culture Geekery every month. Also sponsored by New City Bakery, fresh baked goods that include homemade cookies, cakes, pan dulce, and homemade tortillas. Visit them today at facebook.com backslash New City Bakery. Today on Unearthing My Childhood, we're going to review the awesome series Exo Squad. So this was a cartoon that aired from 1993 to 1994. There were two seasons and I was 15 at the time when this came out, so I was a little bit older and uh, this actually had some pretty mature themes that appealed to me because I, you know, still loved animation at the time and so it was a nice uh, welcome series because it actually covered some themes like um, dealing with slavery and oppression and the classic sci-fi idea that if you have creations and they turn against you, you know, what kind of uh, obligation do you have to stop them? So uh, if you're not familiar, the basic idea of the series is that you have this race called the Neo-Sapiens that was created by man, uh, basically turned into a workforce. But when they uh, realized that that's all that they were bred for, they uh, turned against humans and a war started. And as part of the war, this new technology uh, called E-frames, which are these mech suits that fit around the soldiers, uh, became the way that they would fight the battles. So the, the cartoon featured these E-frames and they are such an awesome design and so detailed, especially here in the toys, which we'll, we'll get into looking at each one of them. So I, I will say before we move on to the toys, if you have never seen Exo Squad, you must give it a chance. Um, I mean, it definitely has some early 90s designs to it, but the, the story's compelling and characters actually die in this series. I mean, I was even as a kid, I was surprised. But anyway, uh, these were the three that I dug up that I still had. Uh, when I cleaned up my parents' house, so let's take a look at each one. Before I show the actual figures, I did want to review uh, the boxes, because uh, these actually I kept intact. And so you see there was some beautiful art on the front of the character that you would get. And then they would actually have a part where you would lift it up, and so you could see the whole figure before you actually bought the toy and it has a little you know blurb here uh, about the exo squad wanting you to help you know with the battle against the neo sapiens and so um i always thought that was a pretty cool feature i actually saw in one of the other boxes i was trying to remember how much one of these costs apparently these were like ten dollars which is very surprising considering uh, how detailed they are so you know back here you had all the the details of the character so i'll probably just go ahead and show each one so this this is the first figure we'll move on to all right so first up we have the character lieutenant jt marsh so it's no surprise to me that i have this figure because uh, like i mentioned in the previous videos I was always drawn to the leader characters. So JT Marsh was the leader of the uh, squadron that you would follow through most of the series. 
Um, you know, he was just a lieutenant, so he wasn't like a high ranking official, but he was the one that was always, you know, in the thick of things. And he was always leading the main squad of heroes that we would follow through the story. And so now that you get a closer look up, uh, look at him and his E-frame, so JT stands at about three inches tall and his E-frame at around six. And so if you can see all the detail here, uh, there in the right arm, you have that plasma cannon. Um, he did have some weapons. The only thing he's missing is a little uh, twin laser that would be in his hand. Uh, the rockets on the wings are permanent as far as the toys concerned. Uh, there is a laser there in the middle at the top and then you have the two uh, missiles that actually uh, are able to fire. Um, let me show you what's on the other hand real quick. So if you see on the left hand of the E-frame uh, there's more of a Gatling, a Gatling gun style weapon and it does spin uh, to give the illusion of firing. So. Uh, now let's see what JT looks like inside the E-frame. So the first thing you would do would be to lift the front hatch and then on the legs there is two little sections to open and then on the knees they would fall forward. Uh, the wings would get in the way of the main hatch a little bit so that's why you can't see JT's face right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and close up the cockpit here. And here we have JT fully in his E-frame. Now I don't remember the in-story explanation of how they're able to breathe in space because obviously this is exposed. Uh, but I, I do have the series on DVD. Unfortunately it never went to Blu-ray. So I'll have to go back and watch that. But hey, it's a cartoon after all, right? So next up we have Phaeton. So he is actually the leader of the Neo Sapiens. And uh, if I remember the lore correctly, he may have been the first one to rise up against the humans. And so that's why the rest of the Neo Sapiens just made him uh, their leader because he's the driving force behind this revolution. So um, of course in classic bad guy fashion, his E-frame uh, has mainly a black color scheme. And as far as I remember, he is complete. Uh, he should have just come with those three rockets, which go at, at the, the tri-missile launchers there at the top of the E-frame. And then he just had a rifle and a handgun there as well. So if you look at the right side of the E-frame, uh, if I remember right, that was more like a laser cannon. And on the left hand of the E-frame, the reason the claws are more together is because that was used for gripping stuff like enemies, for example. Uh, so let's see what he looks like in his E-frame. So here with Phaeton's E-frame, uh, the window there on the cockpit is actually able to go all the way up because there's nothing getting in the way. And on the thighs, they open up and then the knee joints come forward, uh, just like in JT's E-frame. And uh, if you see there around his waist, uh, there is a little uh, circular clip that that way you can put them in place and they won't fall out. And one thing I forgot to mention, uh, which is actually part of the lore. So if you look there to the top right of his head, you'll notice a little yellow wire sticking out. That actually plugs to the back of their head. And I forgot that in the lore, uh, that's how the E-frames are controlled. So it's kind of like the matrix where it plugs into the back of your head and that's how you control the E-frame. So, like I said, it's been a while since I've seen the actual show, uh, but the more I talk about it, I, I definitely want to pull out my old DVD and re-watch the series because it's, it's definitely worth another watch. And uh, real quick, I will say there at the top of his seat, if you notice, it has his name. So I guess that's just in case any other Neo Sapiens get any bright ideas about trying to uh, use his E-frame. So let's check it out with the cockpit closed. So this is what Phaeton looks like inside his E-frame. And oh no, it looks like JT Marsh wandered onto the set and Phaeton didn't like that. So now you get to see how those claw grips work. So JT, you shouldn't be walking on when it's Phaeton's turn to be photographed. So anyway, this is what Phaeton looks like in all his glory. So let's go on and move to the next one.
All right, last up we have Typhonus. So if I remember right, he was kind of like the second hand to Phaeton. And so here, his E-frame, if I remember right as well, I believe this was the design, kind of like the, the mass design for the troops on the Neo Sapien side. I uh, could be wrong, but I feel like this was the, it's not a generic design, but it's the one that was used by all of them. Uh, but here, uh, Typhonus, uh, he has, you know, his two weapons. Again, I think he's complete because if you look down there to the left, that's actually a little cluster of four missiles that are on a stick. And here at the top right, I have opened one of the ports and that's where you would put the missiles. Uh, it's actually uh, uh, hard to represent this in a toy. Uh, if I can find a picture from the show, I'll show it. Uh, but this is kind of one of those, uh, if you're a Gundam fan, you've seen this style before to where the, the port opens up and like multiple rockets will spray out. Uh, so it's a very cool effect in the show. Uh, you also see uh, both his arms are cannons. So uh, one there, the green rocket on the bottom, and then the other one has like a mace. So I don't remember again if that was in the show like that, but I assume it was more for you know, launching physical damage than it was any kind of explosion. Uh, so let's see what he looks like in his E-frame. I went ahead and skipped ahead and didn't show what it looks like when the E-frame opens because um, there really wasn't anything different. The cockpit does open all the way and then you still have the same design where the thighs and the knees open up and you fit in the character with the, uh, the C-shaped ring. Uh, I did want to show here too, I opened both ports um, so that's where the missiles would come out in the show. And again, it's just, you know, very cool design. Uh, I think the legs are funny cause they, they're kind of, you know, real close together, but you know what? These are flying in space, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so that was Typhonus. I hope you've enjoyed this look at these few figures that I had here. There's a ton more out there, so if you do an internet search, you should be able to find the other figures. They are just as much uh, detailed and awesome as these are. And again, I cannot stress enough, if you have not checked out ExoSquad, you can either find the DVD on Amazon, I believe you can also check it out uh, on Amazon Prime, uh, but you've got to check out this series. So thanks to those of you who have been watching. Uh, if you like these videos, hit like. I'll be having some more coming out that are dealing with toys from my childhood. So until then, we will see you guys next time.